So this video is for integrated 2MA. It's the chapter two D-Day, uh, D-Day number one. Okay, we'll have another one on Monday. So there's two ways to do this problem on number one. One way is to um, find this angle here, okay, by taking 112 minus it to get uh, 180 minus uh, 112 to get this angle because this is a strain angle. Then taking these three angles and adding them up to 180 and then solving for X. But another way to do it is this 112 is called an exterior angle, okay? So this, um, let me highlight it. This 112 is called an exterior angle, exterior angle. And these two angles, I just want to change it. These two angles here and here are called interior angles, remote interior angles. Okay, so these ones here are remote interior angles. And we have a theorem that states the following. That um, the sum of the two remote interior angles is equal to the exterior angle. So I'm going to use that theorem to solve this. Okay, that's what I'm going to use, okay? So what am I going to do? Well, I am going to take that 112. And that is going to equal the sum of the two remote interior angles, which if I take a 2x and a 6x plus 4, I get an 8x plus 4. And then I'm going to solve that. So when I solve that, I am going to have uh, 108 is equal to 8x. I am going to divide by eight. So 108 divided by eight is 13.5. So X is going to be 13.5. And the justification for what I did is uh, that I use the, this fact right here that the sum of the two remote interior angles is equal to the exterior angle. Okay, on number two, find M and, and the measure of the each angle, okay? So in this one, I am going to use the, the triangle um, angle sum theorem, okay? So, triangle angle sum theorem that states the sum of the angles in a triangle add to 180. Okay, so that's the fact that I'm gonna be using. So I am going to take uh, 3m plus 7 plus m plus 6 plus 2m minus 3, set it equal to 180 and solve. So 3m and m and 2m, that's going to give me 6m. I have a 7 and a 6, which is a 13. 13 minus 3 is 10. Um, so I'm going to get 6m is equal to 170. I'm going to divide by one, uh, 170 by six, and I am going to get um, 28.3 repeating for my answer. And then I'm gonna find each of the angles, okay? So um, this angle here, I'm gonna add six to it, so this angle here is going to be 34.3 repeating. Um, this angle here, 
I am going to take two times 28.3 repeating minus three. So times two minus three, I get 53.6 repeating. So this one's gonna be 53.6 repeating. And this one up here, this one up here, I am, whoops, let me get rid of this, sorry. I am going to be taking a three times 28.3 repeating plus seven. So I am going to times by three and then add seven. And that one I actually got 92. That one was 92 degrees. And those are my three angles. Okay, on number three, it says determine if a triangle with these side lengths can be made or not. Um, so this, and if, if it can be made, determine if it's a right triangle. So what we're gonna do is a triangle inequality, a okay? triangle inequality, where we're going to um, add two sides um, and subtract the same two sides and then compare it to um, the third one. Um, I'm gonna take the, biggest one and use that one as the one I'm going to see if it works. So what that means, I'm going to take the other two. I'm going to take nine and seven and add those together, which is a 16. Nine minus seven, add those together, which is a two. That 18 has to be in between 16 and two, which it is not. So this one cannot be a triangle. Now, let me take the next one. Um, let's say, again, I'm gonna use the biggest one. It doesn't matter, just choose one of them. I'm just gonna use the biggest one and then use the other two. So I'm gonna take four and three and add and get seven. I'm gonna take four minus three, which is one. And what has to be true is five has to be between, be between one and seven, which is true. So this one makes a triangle. Now I need to try and see if it is a right triangle. So for that, I always have to have my hypotenuse be the biggest number, okay? So I would check to see is three squared plus four squared equal to five squared? And so I get nine plus 16 equals 25, which is 25 equal 25. So that's true, so I have a right triangle. So it is a triangle, that's what I proved up here, but in particular, it is a right triangle. On number four, can this triangle be made justified? Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I can check a couple things. I can check the sides, okay? Let's say I'm trying to see if this 13 is acceptable. So if it's acceptable by triangle inequality, I'm gonna take eight plus seven, which is 15. Eight minus seven, sorry, started to um, write the answer eight minus seven, which is one. And is 13 in between one and 15? Yes, so that's okay. Now, I also have angles here. So let's check out the angles. So I know that the angles in a triangle add to 180. So I'm gonna take 180 minus 130 minus 25. So 180 minus 130 minus 25 is 25. So this is a 25 degrees. Okay. So the problem is if this is a 25 degrees and this is a 25 degrees, that means that this should be isosceles. And it's not because I have an eight and I have a seven. These are not the same. So this is an impossible triangle, impossible. Um, needs to be isosceles, but sides are not. Okay. 
And number five, we want to prove these two triangles are congruent using a flowchart proof. Um, be sure to justify reasons. Okay. So the first thing I notice right away is this side right here. Okay, so they share that side. Okay, so that's gonna be a side they share. Now, these arrows here are telling me that these two blue lines are parallel, cut by that pink transversal, which means that alternate interior angles are going to be the same. So the two angles I just put in orange are going to be the same, angle L and K. And so when I'm saying that L and K is this angle, this angle here, for example, would be M, K, N. That's this angle. Um, now, I have another set of parallel lines. I have this set and this set. And with that set, I'm going to end up having this angle here and this angle here be the same because of alternate interior angles. So this angle here, L, K, N, is going to be same as this angle here, which is M, N, K. So looking at this, I've got an angle, a side, an angle, angle, side, angle. Okay, so these triangles are going to be congruent by angle, side, angle, and I need to give my justification. So um, let me start with my purple angle, but even before I say that, I'm going to state this, that uh, let's say I call it um, LK, line segment LK is parallel with line segment MN, reason given. Now, that is going to lead to the fact that I'm going to say next, which is angle L. K N is congruent to angle M N K. I'm doing the purple angles. And that reason is parallel lines lead to alternate interior angles. Oops, hold on a second. Alternate interior angles congruent. Okay. Um I also have the fact of the line segment KN. So KN is congruent. I'm going to say KN and NK. I'm going to try to keep the order in both triangles. And that is reflexive. A reflexive property of, of congruence. Then I am going to use the blue lines that I was talking about before, okay, that they are parallel. So let's say that ang uh, line segment LN, LN is parallel with, let's call it MK. And that is given. And then that led to my orange angles being congruent. And so that was angle, let's say L and K is congruent to M, K, N. And that reason is the same as the purple, parallel lines lead to alternate interior angles congruent. And then this is going to lead to the final statement that these three things lead to these two triangles being congruent. So let's say I call it triangle KLN. If I say triangle KLN, um, K is where the purple angle is. So I'm going to start on the in the other triangle with N. M, K. And the reason for this is angle, side, angle, congruence. OK. 
Okay, on the next one here. Okay, on this one. Um, let me give myself some space. So looking at this one, I have a hypotenuse. Okay, color code it. So this is going to be my hypotenuse on this side. I'll, I'll just leave those marks so you can see that they were given. And that, so those two sides are congruent. And then like the other one, I have this side here that they share, that those are gonna be congruent. And I also have my right angle here. I have my right angle. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna say is that I can use this. I'm gonna say that um, these triangles are right triangles. Um, so triangle R, Q, S, and triangle um, T, S, so I'll do the same order, T, Q, S. Oops, didn't give anything, any statement, are right triangles. And the reason for this given. Now, I also have that um, line segment, okay, um, line segment RQ, so RQ is congruent to TQ, reason given. And then I have the orange one. And I'm just gonna squeeze that right here. And I'm gonna say QS is congruent to QS. QS is congruent to QS. The reason is reflexive. Now, since I have all of these statements, I know that they're right triangles. I know that the leg, which is this QS, and the hypotenuse, which is this RQ and TQ, are congruent. Then I can say triangle RQS is congruent to triangle TQS. And the reason is hypotenuse leg congruence. Okay, on number. Six. Okay, so what is the area below? Show your dissections and any subproblems you use. Okay, so there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Some of these are going to be easier than others of these. So you just want to be careful with that. Um, something, so we want to find that area. Okay. One way I'm gonna think about it is kind of thinking of it as if I had this whole entire um, shape. Now it's 23 here on this side, this side's 23, which means this side has to be 23. So if this is 12 from here to here, then this is going to be 11 to give me the rest of that 23. Now this is 16 and this is nine. So this is nine here, which means all the way across this is gonna be 25, which is the same up here. So there's different ways to think about doing this problem, but what I'm basically gonna do is I'm gonna find the big rectangle which is 23 by 25. And so when I do that math, 23 times 25 is 575. So that's 570, oops, 575. Then from that, I'm gonna subtract these two shapes here. This uh, trapezoid, okay. And this rectangle. 
So let me start with the rectangle. It's probably the easiest one here. So that is seven by nine, which means that this is 63. So I'm gonna have 575 minus 63. And then when I'm dealing with that trapezoid, okay, I'm gonna subtract that because that piece is missing too. This is 11, this is 10, this is 25. So when I find the area of this, I'm gonna take my bases, add them together, times them by my height, and divide by two. So I'm basically gonna have 35 times 11 um, divided by two, and I get 192.5. So my final answer is gonna be this 575 minus this 63 minus this 192.5. And that is going to give me, let's see, 575 minus 63 minus 192.5, 319.5 for that area, units squared. Again, there's different ways to go about doing it. We should all end up with the same answer. Okay, on seven, this one you have to be careful. We can use a side splitter for the sides that are being split. So one side that's being split is this green side. The other side that's being split is this pink side. Which side is not being split? The one with the 10 and the X. So only when I'm dealing with the numbers in the green and the pink can I use side splitter, okay? So, and how do I know I can use side splitter? because I know that these triangles are similar because they share this angle A. And I can also have these corresponding angles congruent, so by angle, angle. Okay, so if I have these parallel lines with these two bases, when the sides are being split by two parallel lines, then it is going to be a um, situation where the sides that are being split, I can use side splitter. So I am going to do the following, okay? This is for X. I am going to take, I can take 12 over 10, or I'm taking this 12 and this 10, over three equals three over Y, equals three over Y, okay? Sorry, I'm solving for, for X, for Y first, I apologize. Um, sorry, just gonna get rid of those. Okay, so 12 over 10 is the same as three over Y. And I'm gonna cross multiply and I'm gonna get uh, 12y is equal to 30. So I'm gonna get 30 divided by 12. And 30 divided by 12 is a 2.5. So my y is gonna be a 2.5. This is a 2.5. Now, when I'm trying to find that x, which is not a side being split, I cannot use side splitter, okay? So um, I'll do this one in purple, okay? So I can say 10 is to X, where 10 is from the smaller triangle. And I'm gonna use the green side, not the pink sides, because I know everything on the green side. I found something on the pink side. Never use something you found in case you did it wrong. So 10 is from the small triangle, 12 is from the small triangle. Do not use this 10, for the big triangle, because that is not what we're gonna use. We gotta use this whole entire side, which is 22. So I'm saying that this 10 is to this 12, as, I'm gonna get a different color, let's say blue, as this X is to this 22. Okay, that's, that's what I'm doing. So then I'm gonna cross multiply and solve and I get 12X is equal to 220. I divide 220 by 12 and I get 18.3 repeating, 18.3 repeating. Okay, and that's your answer. Okay, on eight, write a converse statement for the conditional statement below, assuming the original statement is true. Determine if the converse statement must be true. Explain your reasonings. 
So if two angles of a triangle have equal measures, then the two sides of the opposite of the triangle opposite those angles have equal length. Okay. And that is true. So now we're going to do the opposite. So if two sides, okay, so so really I have, let me color code. I have an if part, and then I had the then part. And for the converse, I'm switching these, okay? So I'm now gonna have my blue part for the if. So if two sides, whoops, I'm still in highlight. If two sides of the, op, uh, two sides of the triangle, so if two sides of, so I, um, let me see how I'm gonna work this. Then the two sides of the triangle opposite those angles have equal lengths. So if two sides of a triangle have equal length, that basically makes it isosceles, right? Then, the two angles opposite the sides so again then the two angles opposite those sides have equal measures And this is true. We prove this. So this is true. We proved that um, the angles, the I'll say the base angles. in an isosceles triangle are equal. Okay, on number 9A, are the triangles similar? Justify your conclusion completely, okay? So um, first thing I'm going to do is kind of compare things by colors, what should correspond. So just looking at the angles, uh, this is the side in between the two angles that they marked. So those are gonna be the same. Um, this three is by the one with the single mark. So this nine would correspond with that, which means this and this would be the same. Okay. Now, are these triangles similar? Yes, they are. Okay, yes. And why are they similar? Angle, angle similarity, because we have those two angles. So yeah, that's the first question. Now on B, determine the perimeter of triangle BIG. So BIG, I would take three plus six plus eight. So I get nine plus eight or 17, okay, 17 units. Using a proportion, show that you can calculate the perimeter of a triangle CAT without determining each of the missing sides. So when they say proportion, what I know is that if I double all the sides, I double the perimeter. If I triple all the sides, I triple the perimeter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the, the green sides that I have, the three and the nine, okay? And I'm gonna say uh, three is to nine as, 17 is to let's say P, perimeter. And that when I say perimeter, I'm talking about perimeter of the, the bigger shape. And then I'm gonna cross multiply and solve this. So when I cross multiply and solve this, I end up getting three P is equal to, and 17 times nine is 153. I divide both sides by three and I get that the perimeter is 51. Now, since the sides of my original triangle were, were times by three, because the three became a nine, so that was times by three, then my perimeter 
is also times by three to get this, okay? But here was a proportion where I compare the side to the perimeter, okay? On number 10, um, solve for x. So I know that I have parallel lines cut by transversal. So this angle and this angle are corresponding angles, okay? So corresponding angles are congruent when we have parallel lines. So then I'm gonna take three x plus seven and set it equal to x plus 35. So I'm gonna get two x is equal to uh, 28. I divide by two and I get 14. So x is 14. So on B, um, in this case, I see that I have an isosceles triangle, which means that the base angles are going to be the same, okay? Um, so I'm gonna have a couple justifications here. I'm gonna say base angles equal because isosceles triangle. Second thing I'm gonna say is I have an exterior angle and two remote interior angles. So I'm gonna say exterior angle equals the sum of two remote interior angles, okay? And then I'm gonna do the math. So I am going to take the x plus four plus x plus four, my two remote interior angles, I'm gonna add them, set equal to my exterior. So I'm gonna get two x plus eight is equal to 134. So two x is gonna be equal to 126, and x is gonna be equal to 63. But remember to give justifications on these. Okay, on 11, um, we're going to work this out, but we're also going to write area as a product, which is your outsides being multiplied together, length and width, equals area as a sum, which is adding up all the insides. So in my first one, this is gonna be a three X squared, a negative seven X, a 24 X, and a negative, wow, multiplying, negative 56. Okay, so my area as a product is going to be my length times width. So three X minus seven times X plus eight equal. And then I'm gonna combine like terms. So I'm gonna get three X squared. This is area as a sum. My 24 X and my minus seven X is going to be a positive 17 X minus 56. Now my other triangle, I'm gonna find the outside. Now, um, this is gonna be an X times X. This will be a plus six. This will be a negative two. So I'm gonna write, and I'm gonna write it beneath here. I'm gonna write it down here. So this one's gonna be X plus six times X minus two equals, and now the inside is X squared plus four X minus 12. So you need to write areas of product, which is the ones in parentheses equal areas of sum, which is when I add up everything inside. Um, okay, so Cafe RBV predicts that in the year 2016, they will have sold 500 snacks. After that, they expect the number of snacks sold to increase by 5% each year. Write an equation to model the situation. Use the equation to determine how many snacks were sold in the year 2020. Okay. So um, my multiplier, if it, this is increasing by 5%, is gonna be 1.05, because now I have 105%. So I'm gonna take 500 times 1.05, raise the power X, and that is going to be our equation, okay? Where X is number of years. So from 2016 to 2020, that's going to be four years. 
So I'm going to take 500 times 1.05 to the power 4. I'm going to put it in my calculator. And I'm going to get 607.75 as my answer. Okay, on number 13, um, are these congruent? And, and then if so, why? And then give a triangle statement. Okay, so what I notice is this angle here and this angle here are going to be the same because these are vertical angles, okay? So vertical angles are congruent. Now that's not the justification that they want below, but that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And then what I notice I have is I have angle, side, and then the angle I just marked. Okay, so I have angle, side, angle. So yes, these are going to be congruent by angle, side, angle, congruency. And if I'm gonna write a statement, I need to match things. So, um, B and O have the same angle marking. Um, this angle D, which would be ODC and BDA, both have the same marking. And then the C and A don't have any, so those correspond. So I need to make sure I keep the order. So B goes with O, A goes with C, and D happened to go with D. Doesn't always, but it did. Okay, 14, uh, I'm gonna cross multiply and solve. So I'm gonna get eight is equal to, and this 10 is gonna multiply with both the five and the X. So that's gonna be a 50 minus 10 X. Okay, I'm gonna minus 50. So I get a negative 42 is equal to a negative 10 X. I divide both sides by a negative 10 and I get a 4.2 for our answer. On number 15, I'm going to dilate this um, using a zoom factor of three from the origin. So from the origin. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in a little. Okay, and let me um, get a bigger. Let me just test it. That's too big. I'll try a four. Okay, that's a little better. Um, so this origin here, okay. So where I'm going to be starting from here, maybe I'll do that in, I'll do the rest of NP. So that, that blue spot is where I'm dialing three times the size. So I went up one over one to get to here. So I can do up one over one here, which means I can triple that and go up one, two, three, over one, two, three. Or what I can do is go up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, three times, whichever way you prefer. Okay, now let's say I'm doing this point here. So this point here, I'm going up one over one, two, three. So I'm gonna go up one over one, two, three, up one over one, two, three. Okay, I'm doing that up one over three, three times, or up one over three becomes up one, two, three, over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So now let's say I'm doing this point right here, okay? So I'm going up one, two, over one, two, three, four, five. Up one, two, over one, two, three, four, five. One, two, over one, two, three, four, five, okay? And let me just kind of draw what we have so far, just so people can see where I am. So I've got this part and this part of the shoe so far, okay? So I've done this here, this here, this here. So now I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna go one over one, two, three, four, five. One, one, two, three, four, five. One, one, two, three, four, five. And what you could do at this point for this, honestly, so since this is one, two, 
two units across. Notice that this is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is six times is, is six because two times three is six. If this is one and I need a triple, then I'm going to go out one, two, three. I can just do that because I know how long it's going to be. And I can do that here too. If I know this is one, two, three, then I know it's going to triple and it's going to be nine. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me move this. Nine. Let me just recount that to just make, make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Going across here, this is one, two. So I'm going to triple that. It's going to be six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I can connect. Okay. So connect this to this. And there's our dilation. And that's it.